Dr. Ray Hu is our next speaker. He received his uh, PhD in nuclear engineering from MIT and joined Argonne National Labs in 2010. At Argonne, he is a group manager for plant system analysis and principal nuclear engineer in the nuclear science and engineering division. Uh, he currently is the deputy technical area lead for thermal hydraulics under the NEMS program and leads the development of an advanced system analysis tool known as SAM. Uh, for performing advanced non-light water reactor safety analysis. Today, he will give a talk on system level simulations of heat and mass transport and MSRs. You know, the heat transport is so important for MSR, for safety and economics, and because of a strong link between uh, the, the fluid flow of heat transfer uh, with mass transport, so we combine uh, you know, the, the talk about systems of hydraulics and the mass transport together. So before I start, I'd like to acknowledge my uh, co-colleagues uh, from both Argonne and the Oak Ridge, uh, co-authors for this presentation, including Travis, Mui, Ting Zhou Fei, Jun Fang, Tang Hua, and Bo Fan from Argonne, and uh, Bob Sapko, Zach Taylor, and uh, Kion Lee from Oak Ridge. Introduction on, on this uh, mass transport or mass accountancy issue for MSR. Certainly, this is a key technical area identified by the ART MSR campaign as uh, important and, of course, challenging as well. So, for MSR development, uh, for uh, safety and the economics uh, considerations, Understanding the trends and, and the steady state evolution of chemical species and the isotope composition in the molten salt it is very important. And certainly, estimates of those materials that can be released uh, from MSR as a, as a result of uh, both normal operating condition and accident condition is very important for, for safety and the licensing case. And it's quite a complex phenomenon, as May introduced earlier in this workshop. It covers a wide range of uh, uh, physics, uh, starting from the uh, evolution of a uh, generation of isotopes and the nuclear reactions, transmutation, and, and of course, transport of low species due to both physical and the chemical uh, behavior. And, and certainly uh, for MSR, uh, chemical reaction uh, is very important. Those thermal, physical and thermal chemical properties will dominant or decide uh, the, the behaviors of various species and their, com and their chemical composition. And, and really, I think from a, a design analysis or licensing analysis point of view, um, you know, if we can have a conservative estimates of those uh, uh, release terms of those radio materials, and uh, if it works, I think the reactor uh, will be licensable and, and can be licensed. However, uh, you know, conservative assumptions or approach may put a lot of uh, economic burden in terms of the reactor performance, and certainly. Uh, we're seeking uh, higher fidelity simulations uh, that uh, will utilize multi-scale, multi-physics uh, computational tools to tackle this problem. This is a, a very important slide. I think uh, I borrowed it from a recent report uh, led by Jake McMurray, and I think this uh, figure is also generated by, by the ART MSR campaign in terms of uh, complexity and uh, and how to utilize multi-physics simulation tool to tackle the mass accountancy issue. Um, don't need to elaborate, certainly, uh, you know, reactor physics calculation important uh, that we know the, the isotope generation rate distribution and the provide, you know, power distributions uh, and, and other things to the thermal fluid calculation, which will provide your, your temperature and the flow field distribution that can be used, then used as, a, as the macroscopic mass transport. And, and certainly other chemical uh, uh, reactions, um, the chemical state calculation, surface deposition, corrosion calculation will require uh, separate tools uh, to capture those phenomena. 
And, uh, and of course, a lot of uh, this analysis re will require the knowledge about the thermal physical property and the thermal chemical properties. This is a very complex uh, issue and a challenging issue. And in this talk, I think I will only focus on the system level uh, mass transport issue. And we will only cover uh, the thermal hydraulics and the species transport on a system level to capture the, the global uh, behavior uh, of, uh, of a mass transport and the radioactive materials transport during normal and uh, existing conditions. To tackle system level uh, thermal hydraulics and the mass transport, we will use the two tools uh, under development in the NIMS program. This includes SAM and the MOL. I will first introduce SAM. So this is a modern system analysis code for long network director safety analysis. Uh, started focused on with the liquid metal code director, but now it covers almost all non network director concepts. Uh, it built on top of the MOOSE framework and seeking advances in software environment, numerical methods, and the physical models as well. While it is being developed as a system level code, uh, it has a lot of advanced models in, in core uh, uh, modeling as well as large vol volume modeling, especially for thermal stratification phenomena in, in a lot of uh, advanced reactor concepts. Uh, built on top of the MOOSE and the flexible software environment, uh, the code has been coupled with many MOOSE-based and non-MOOSE-based code for multi-scale multi-physics simulation. And uh, we're proud to be one of the R&D 100 winners in 2019 for Zenco. For the basics, uh, is system thermal hydraulic simulation model the system using 1D. Some characteristic of our code is certainly a high order numerical schemes, uh, which can uh, have both uh, accuracy and efficiency in terms of uh, uh, 1D fluid modeling. And uh, the code is fairly flexible. You can use some basic components we develop uh, to build very complex uh, engineering systems, including reactor systems. The integration between fluid and solid components are fairly flexible. Uh, and uh, we cover almost uh, all uh, engineering components uh, for reactor simulations. Um, and has a lot of building closure models and uh, allow flexibilities for users to provide their own models in the input and also for the fluid properties as well. MSR transit modeling, one thing uh, important certainly is the uh, denutrient precursor drift. So we develop this general scalar transport capability into the code so we can capture the denutrient precursor concentrations in the system. Uh, this same capability can be applied for the transport of other uh, radioactive isotopes uh, like a decay heat precursors, trillium, or other fission products. So this is uh, basically one of the foundation for uh, MSR transit simulation as well as the you know, mass transport inside the fluid. Certainly some simple uh, unit test cases have been, have been developed just for verification purpose. And also we have test cases for, for large MSR loop as well as some validation cases using MSR e data. And uh, to do MSR transient modeling, certainly we need to capture the delay neutron precursor drift e uh, effects. So the point connect model uh, was updated to consider the, 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 the transport of the delay neutron precursors. Those terms in red are what's addition to the normal uh, point analysis equation for the solid. And certainly uh, the code has a very flexible uh, uh, reactivity feedback modeling uh, for various uh, reactivity feedback mechanisms. Doppler coolant density moderator, uh, expansion effect, etc. So utilizing you know, the, the basic thermal fluid modeling capability and the point kinetics, uh, we have applied uh, SAM for uh, MSR applications. There are uh, a few demonstration cases as well as uh, using SAM for MSR uh, transient benchmark. So certainly this is one of the focus uh, under the NIMS application driver technical area. Um, 
Uh, it's also in coordination with the ARP MSR campaign. Uh, since last year, uh, Oak Ridge also joined effort, uh, and certainly uh, a lot of new data are uncovered from the MSRE database. Uh, provide a lot of value uh, that we can pursue additional benchmark uh, exercises. Certainly, acknowledgement will go to uh, Dan, our session chair, and also uh, Dave Boken, who are uh, very uh, helpful in, in, in uncovering uh, the MSRE data. And, and for, for, for the work done at Argon, we're using SAM to perform uh, basically uh, code validation using available MSRE data. A number of test cases have been uh, performed. Uh, so this includes the pump cost down, pump startup. For these two cases, there is a so zero power case. And then additional uh, benchmark were performed for the natural convection test cases and the reactivity insertion test cases. There are also plans for performing additional test cases using the so-called frequency domain test. Uh, without going into details, just some results from the MSRE benchmark. I think here shows the result from the pump cost down and the pump startup. Uh, because the basically these are so-called zero power, uh, the power is at so low. Basically, this is uh, isothermal conditions. This uh, effect basically uh, trying to uh, validate or exam the the precursor drift effect uh, to to the reactivity feedback. Uh, the tests are performed by uh, inserting or drawing uh, the control row. And, uh, and the measure of worth and, uh, and uh, in the code, uh, we, we perform this type of calculation to, to capture the precursor drift effects and then compare uh, the simulation results in, in the aspects of the reactivity due to uh, the precursor drift uh, to the measure data for the control row insertion or withdrawal. Overall, the comparisons are, are good. Uh, certainly, I think the team are still working on, on this benchmark and the potentially additional reactor physics calculation will be performed. So we will have better estimates of the reactor kinetic parameters as well as power shape, flux shape, etc. Similar simulation will perform for natural convection test cases. Um, Without going into details, the, uh, the interest here is to examine the inherent reactivity feedback effects and then uh, how the code performs versus the, the, the power predict, power uh, results from the experimental data. Um, again, I think this is the result maybe more than a year old. I think there may be some more recent results have some improvements. Uh, by uh, additional model improvements. Uh, if for interest people, uh, there is a Pfizer a paper on this work, and then there will be a newest paper on, on this work as well. Uh, you're suggested to refer to those papers uh, for more details. And I think as similarly to the previous test, additional simulations can be performed to get better uh, reactor physics parameters um, and potentially improve the benchmark simulation results. In addition to a traditional uh, 1D system level modeling of the MSRE model, we also have some additional work to have some higher fidelity model for MSRE. Uh, this is a work actually funded by USNRC. Um, so we are actually model um, uh, 3D representations of MSRE core uh, with 3D representation of the structure materials uh, graphite in this case, and then still using one-dimensional flow to, to represent the channels. There's a built-in capability in SAM to take care of this coupling between 1D fluid and the 3D heat conduction. Uh, this is a nice feature to utilize to have more detailed uh, temperature distributions uh, uh, inside the core. And similarly, uh, you know, this can be also modeled using a cross media approach where you mix the fluid and the solid all together. Uh, so this, there are 
you know, very similar approach we can use uh, certainly for, for different, you know, fidelities or different considerations. Slightly change the topic a little bit. While this talk will be mostly focused on liquid fuel uh, molten salt reactor, we actually have done a lot of work for a solid fuel, uh, you know, molten salt cooled reactors or FHR. Um, there have been a lot of work actually in the, uh, also available in the literature uh, to examine same capabilities for FHR modeling. We have demonstration cases for both the UC Berkeley Mark 1 design as well as the open uh, Kairos general FHR uh, design infor uh, information. And also code has been utilized um, uh, the CIT benchmark test cases for code validation and the very good results are reported available in some publications as well. So for FHR modeling, uh, in, in addition to some you know, general model development that's universal for all reactors, there are a lot of uh, FHR specific modeling uh, work uh, we're performing in collaboration with Kairos Power. Uh, just name a few of them. Uh, fluid solidification can be a concern of uh, FHR under overcooling conditions, you, the salt may freeze. And uh, we have a built-in model uh, uh, developed to capture the salt freezing phenomenon. Uh, and then salt freezing and then thawing again uh, or remelting uh, uh, during uh, a full transients. Uh, Trillion transport is another area we work uh, closely with Paris Power. Uh, this is certainly a very important source current evaluation for FHR. Um, and then another uh, modeling uh, uh, feature or challenge for FHR is the modeling of the radiative heat transfer in the fluid. So we have built, uh, developed some models to capture the multi-body solid to fluid radiative heat transfer modeling. Uh, because salt uh, is not a, a pure transparent uh, uh, fluid. Just elaborate a little more on the trillion transport modeling because this is more related to the mass transport we're talking about today. Uh, this is certainly a very important source term consideration for FHR design and also for our MSR design. The phenomenon uh, needs to be captured, including you know the, the generation, uh, uh, inside FHR and of course very importantly is the uptake in the graphite pebbles and the reflectors and, and certainly other phenomena we need to capture is the permeation through the pipes, pipe walls, vessel walls or evolution to the cover gas, evaporation to the gas phase, etc. So we have been uh, built on top of the same thermal fluid framework to develop uh, treating transport capability inside uh, the code, including both the fluid and uh, and and the solid uh, transport. Uh, some initial verification and the validation test cases are performed as well. Uh, in terms of the methodology for a uh, graphite uptake in uh, for treating, we're using so-called bulk diffusion approach, uh, the same one as used in, in the in the Trident code. So in some of the code validation, uh, basically the Trident results and same results uh, will be the same uh, for, this, uh, for this case because the underlying model is basically the same. This is still uh, some additional model uh, capability development inside SAM, but this is more on more for the uh, bubble transport. Uh, in, the, in the same uh, code, uh, the basic fluid equation focus actually on single phase fluid flow, but for uh, uh, molten salt reactors, uh, the, 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 the transport of the gases uh, species are also important. Um, and, uh, and certainly, for example, xenon uh, is it, it, very important uh, isotopes uh, that has a very large uh, neutron absorption. Uh, in, in MSRE, I think there are some uh, approaches to, to leverage some of the helium cover gas in K in a system and to help uh, uh, remove the, the xenon uh, uh, from the system into the cover gas and then go through some uh, filter system, etc. But anyway, I think uh, in general, bubble transport uh, is important for gaseous species transport. Uh, certainly, they are uh, they will flow at a different velocity uh, due to gravity effects. 
and also the interfacial area will also be important for other uh, uh, transport or uh, behavior or, or, or other physics phenomena uh, involved in the transport between the gases uh, space to the liquid space. So it's important to have a better estimate of, uh, of a, a bubble transport to be able to capture the interfacial area and then we can transport those parameters into the other codes for more detailed uh, uh, calculation for, for other uh, phenomena. So with that in consideration, uh, Bob Sacco at Oak Ridge has been working on this uh, drip flux model in, in SAM. Uh, uh, so this is a pretty uh, standard drip flux model uh, from, the, from Zuber. And uh, in terms of the closure models, and uh, this is uh, built on top of the assumptions of bubbly flow. So some of the closure models are using related correlations uh, uh, like Zichy correlations for CNAT. Um, and uh, some initial demonstration or verification work uh, study have been also performed. What well, showing here is actually a very, very simple case. Um, you know, have some uh, helium injection in the first node or, in, or the first element uh, of, the, of the pipe or in the entrance region of the pipe and then uh, basically, we're comparing uh, the co simulation results with analytical simulation results versus uh, uh, checking the importance of capture the, the drip the, the drip flux effects. Certainly, the volume concentration, uh, uh, volume fraction uh, different, the interfacial area are different because of the, the gases are, uh, are flowing at a higher velocity. There is also another code, MO under development, with the focus on this engineering scale mass transport and corrosion. Uh, led by Oak Ridge. Um, so it's focused on evaluating the source terms for chemical and the isotopes. Uh, we start uh, you involved in the convective and the diffusion transport mechanisms. Also built on top of the MOOSE framework and will be flexible to be coupled with other tools. And uh, in the past year, we have been working together uh, trying to do some integrate SAM and the MO uh, work trying to uh, getting the capability ready, uh, basically, and uh, and uh, potentially to be used for system scale uh, mass transport simulations for for MSR. What's showing here is some application mode. Uh, in this case, is actually modeling uh, the noble metal transport uh, in MSR. Uh, basically is uh, performing some of the work done in the early years of the MSRE program, but now with the MOCO for this uh, noble metal transport. Um, uh, the focus here is actually uh, on, on, on the non-convective terms or, or static mass uh, transport. Uh, this is basically the depletion calculation or using the Batman equation. Um, there's uh, there's additional terms uh, due to the the mass transport from the fluid to the to the solid, so that will be in this uh, this KB term basically uh, has both effect of decay and other uh, mass uh, mass transport uh, uh, mechanisms. I want to draw you to the attention that the the mass transfer coefficients, you know, certainly when if you consider you know, the bubble transport, the mass transport coefficients are much higher and the surface area are much higher, which results in a much higher uh, uh, mass transport rate. Um, that's, all, that's also the reason why we perform, uh, why we implement the drip flux model for bubble transport into SAM. Um, just some quick results uh, from this uh, uh, application. Uh, it's a busy slide, I think, uh, from left to right, the result I'm showing here is the first one is uh, by basically decay only, and then is considered a mass transfer effect without uh, the bubble effects, and then the last one on the right is the mass trans considered a mass transfer effects uh, with uh, with bubble effects. So you can expect uh, the the rate, the specific concentrations will decrease. And what's uh, showing on the figure is basically normalize the, the specific concentration versus the fission rate. 
And uh, the similar trend for both the U233 and the U235 uh, fishing products. So with the limited time, I'm just giving you a, a high level uh, overview on the work we're performing using SAM and MOL for system level uh, thermal hydraulics and uh, mass transport. I should say a lot of codes are available for individual physics. Uh, they're at much higher uh, maturity for individual physics simulation. Uh, but you know, integrating them together to tackle this multi-species, multi-phase species transport uh, problem is still very challenging. And we're still at the early stage to have these high fidelity tools for this phenomenon. Um, for SAM, we can utilize the system thermal hydraulics along with PKE to provide system level thermal hydraulics capability. Mo uh, can focus on uh, source terms and sink terms for chemical and isotope evolution. And we integrate SAM and Mo together. This will be able to provide uh, integrated system level thermal fluid and mass transport modeling capability. Uh, certainly, as we move along with, uh, with this work, this can be expanded to including other physics tools for multi-scale multi-physics uh, mass accountancy issue. With that, uh, Dan, get back to you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we might have time for one question here. Uh, I think Joanna is asking, have you or Bob considered nucleation of gas on particulates in the salt? like graphite debris or insoluble noble metal particles in your modeling efforts? I don't know if Bob is here, Bob may be on vacation, but I can say here now we haven't looked into uh, the problem, but certainly that can be some of the future work. 